four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. Welcome to my channel, Jay Cutler TV. And make sure to stay in tune with the newest and updated videos. Subscribe below, guys. Thank you so much for following along. Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Be Built by Broza. We are here live at the Mecca of Bodybuilding Gold's Gym Venice. Dave and I just finished doing quads and biceps, so we're a little tired and sweaty, but still want to show you a couple of new unique movements. The first exercise we're going to show you is for the width of the lats. It's going to be a seated cable pullover done on an incline bench. I'm going to have Dave demonstrate that and I'm going to describe it to you as he goes along. The second movement is really good for the mass of the triceps and we're actually doing it on one of those. Many gyms have these. They have like a weighted uh, dip pull-up machine uh, and we're going to use that to do a movement which is kind of like a hybrid in between sort of a push down, uh, almost like a close grip bench press, a hybrid between the two movements, really good for putting on mass, excellent to use for supersets and again I'm going to have Dave demonstrate and I'll talk a little bit more about it while he does it and hopefully you guys will enjoy these new movements. Okay guys, this is the first movement that I talked about. This is a seated pullover using a cable attachment on an incline bench. As you can see, the bench is at about maybe 45 degrees or so, and you can play with this angle a little bit. His arms are held just about completely straight. He's coming back to a full stretch, which is gonna stretch the very, very top of the lats and the terrace muscle. And using just the power of the upper lats and the terrace, he's doing a pullover motion down until there's a full contraction. He's going very, very slow up to the top till he gets full stretch and down into complete contraction. This is excellent for adding width to the lats. If you're a bodybuilder or a physique competitor or a figure, uh, this will help you to look wider when standing and relaxed on stage and in a front double bicep, front lat spread, back lat spread. And this movement is really excellent for supersetting with dumbbell pullovers as well because while this part, this movement will actually emphasize the contraction more than the stretch, the dumbbell pullover will emphasize the stretch more than the contraction. So if you do them as a superset, you really hit the belly of the lats really well. Give this exercise a try, don't go try to go too heavy. Do it very, very strictly, and you'll really feel it in the lats. This is the second movement I was talking about done on a weighted dip pull-up machine. And Dave is gonna demonstrate how we work the triceps here. He's using the pad, and he's using the outside of the pad, leaning over just a little bit. And what he's doing is he's pushing downward almost in between what would be a tricep push down and either a dip or a close grip bench press. It's a similar feeling to that type of a movement. He's coming back high enough so the triceps are at a bit of a stretch, pushing straight down to full contraction. This gives you a little bit of a different feeling than a close grip bench press or a dip, even though it's similar because it's on a machine. You get a little better contraction at the bottom, a little bit more control. And this is also a really, really good movement to superset with other movements, especially if you want to do like a pre-exhaust superset with an isolation movement, like a push down and then move into this, which is a compound movement using the triceps, but also the anterior deltoids and a bit of the chest. Try this movement if you have this machine into gym. It's really, really good for adding mass to the whole of the triceps. Hi Merlin, we're back at the Mecca and this is Ask Merlin Monday. You got some good questions as usual? Always have some good questions and if I don't have a good ones, I ask you to ask me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so first question, uh, Quick question. Um, somebody had asked me about uh, Himalayan sea salt and whether um, you know using it prior to a workout, uh, I guess on your food, uh, can enhance the pump. And the answer to that is yes, but it doesn't actually necessarily have to be Himalayan sea salt. Salt, just in general, uh, will help enhance the pump. It will help enhance vascularity, um, and it can be 
any kind of salt really uh, because salt basically draws a lot of fluid into the vascular system so because of that you'll actually feel you know you'll see your veins get thicker and you'll get more you know fluid drawn into the muscles so you'll get a better pump Himalayan sea salt I should say is very very healthy and has a lot of health benefits and that's a completely separate issue uh, and um, I do recommend people use that um, I do use it myself on some of my meals uh, but just in general salt will enhance the pump and it will make you more vascular now I should just mention really quickly before a lot of bodybuilders run out there before a show and start piling salt on stuff um, first of all the effect is very temporary and you got to be very careful with it because if you use too much salt or if you drink the wrong amount of fluid with the salt um, or if your body's very very overly responsive to sodium you could end up holding a lot of a lot of what some of the water will actually go in between the skin and the muscle into the subcutaneous centers uh, and make you look smooth so be careful with that however if you are backstage uh, pumping up for a show just for instance and you just really feel like you can't get a pump at all like your muscles just aren't pumping and even if you've used adequate carbohydrates and sugars uh, and nothing's happening you may benefit from having something salted like a couple of pretzels or something like that sometimes that does the trick but just be careful with that so yes all salt will enhance the pump and vascular okay so another question which um, sort of kind of trying to interpret here but I'm going to interpret the way I think it is meant uh, I was asked uh, when targeting a muscle from various angles like we tend to do during training um, is doing just one set from each of these angles adequate or do you need to do more um, it's kind of interesting question because years ago um, there was a principle uh, put out by Joe Weider because he had the Joe Weider principles uh, and he called it eclectic training uh, and basically the theory behind it was instead of doing say 10 sets for a muscle where you do four sets bench press four sets incline and two sets flies you'd actually pick 10 different exercises completely different 10 different angles and just do one set of each uh, and there is I mean there's some validity behind that because you know you know you know and if you've been watching the show that I recommend to people that they constantly change angles they change grips width of stances on squats and leg presses and things like that uh, even the way you hold the dumbbell from the inside to the outside because all of these things will help to target uh, a muscle even though it's very very slight changes it'll target different sets of uh, muscle fibers for more complete development that said um, I don't think this is the kind of thing that you want to do too often there's no reason why you can't throw it in every now and again but I think that um, you should try to concentrate on hitting a muscle from various angles but I think that you need at least at least two good work sets uh, and I feel the reason for that is, is because a lot of times when you do uh, a movement it, the first set you don't fully connect with the muscle you don't fully connect with the angle um, and sometimes the second set you'll find is a lot more productive than the first set now some people think two sets is not very much that's all we've happened to do per, per muscle group uh, because we connect very very strongly and do very long sets but just saying multiple sets two to three sets is probably better than one and picking maybe three or four angles uh, and then every once in a while if you want to throw in a workout where you have you know ten different angles go ahead and do that but I think in general you need at least some multiple sets in order to fully connect with any movement good question all right one more quick question and I don't want her to think that we're ignoring her <laughs> this is for you Kim Bridges <laughs> Uh, she had asked um, uh, previously about squatting and what are some of the mistakes that people make when they squat uh, that forces them to not really get the most out of the movement and we will demonstrate this on the show in fact Kim we're gonna get you back here and have you demonstrate this since you asked the question uh, but I just wanted to answer it uh, verbally and say that you know some of the biggest mistakes when squatting I think the first mistake that most people make is not squatting deep enough you see so many people, men and women, probably more men than women, I would say, uh, piling way too much weight on the bar and doing, you know, half or quarter squats, which really is not very productive at all. They just want to see a lot of weight on the bar and grunt and groan and hear the plates rattle, but that's really ridiculous. Uh, those half reps uh, don't really do much to engage uh, all the muscle fibers of the quadriceps and the glutes. So the first mistake is just a, a, a poor range of motion. Uh, second mistake um, is um, you know, even if using the proper range of motion is leaning the torso too far forward uh, during the squat. Uh, and when you do this, you start to engage 
uh, a lot of the lower back because as you have to come back up out of the movement, um, you're forced to almost do like a good morning or like a hyperextension with weight on your back. This puts a lot of pressure on the discs. This can cause lower back injury. So if you're using too much weight and that, and that is forcing you to lean forward like that, you really shouldn't do it. What you need to do is actually to keep your torso, uh, keep a slight arch in the lower back, keep your chest high, keep your eyes high on the wall, uh, and the bar preferably high up on the traps, especially um, if you're looking for uh, gains in muscle. A lot of power lifters will actually do low trap. The, the bar will be low on the traps. It helps them to get better power. Uh, but if you're looking to build muscle higher up, so just make sure you don't lean forward like that. Um, I'd say another mistake is that um, some people rise up on the bowl of their feet when they squat, which is really, really bad. First of all, you could fall forward, which would be horrible. Um, and second of all, you're not engaging the muscles properly. If you cannot squat flat-footed so that your feet are staying on the ground fully during the squat, what I recommend that you do is put either a, a board or a couple of 10-pound plates under your the back of your feet um, because it could be that your, your calves or Achilles tendons aren't um, stretchable enough um, and that's forcing you to come up on the balls of your feet. Uh, so if you do this, you'll better stabilize, your foot will stay flat to the ground uh, and you'll get more out of the squat. Um, so basically what you want to do is make sure that you squat to the proper depth, which is basically parallel or just below parallel, um, that you keep your, your head up, your torso, slight arch in the lower back, keep the chest high, and to make sure that your feet are locked solidly on the ground so that you don't roll up on the ball of the feet. And all of these things will help you to engage the muscles properly and get the most out of the squat. Awesome.